Welcome back guys. We are talking about the translation process or the protein synthesis in prokaryotes. In the last video we have discussed about uh, the, the charging of tRNA right and that is one of the very important stages of all this process. So once we know how the tRNA is charged that means how a tRNA is added with the amino acid sequence specific to that tRNA and we know that. So once we know that thing now let us talk about the first stage of protein synthesis and that is the initiation phase of protein synthesis right. So for the protein synthesis initiation to begin what we require? We require the mRNA which has all the codon, the ribosome both the ribosome subunits large as well as small subunits right. In case of prokaryotes the small subunit is termed as 30s and the large subunit is termed as 50s and complete set of both subunits are termed as 70s ribosome okay and then also we require all this charged tRNAs to begin with the situation. Now the first and most important thing about the initiation complex is to form the initiation complex and that is called the 30s initiation complex and that is the very basic complex that should form. So first thing is the formation of 30s initiation complex. Then they will form 70s initiation complex. Now remember initiation complex means obviously complex means there will be involvement of many different varieties of enzymes as well as those translation factors right to finally produce a huge uh, complicated structure which can finally start the initiation of translation. So if you begin with that what we have here at the very beginning, we have the 30s subunit. So first of all, the 30s subunit will pair with the mRNA because that is a very, very basic thing at the very beginning. So there is a 30s subunit, let us say this one and this 30s subunit is now having different regions just like the regions that are found in the uh, large subunit also. The sites for E, P and A, there are three different sites in the, in the ribosome, we know that. So this is the 30s subunit. Now there are transcription factors that are associated with this 30s subunit. So now let us talk about it. So let us say here the factor, the transcription factor we require during the initiation are termed as initiation factor, right, IF. And usually the factors are IF3, IF2, IF1. Why I am writing this in this way? I will be telling you. Initiation factor 3 will bind with somewhere here. This is the initiation factor 3. Somewhere in the E site, kind of blocking the E site. Then the, trans the initiation factor 1 will come and it will bind somewhere in the A site here, this is initiation factor 1 and initiation factor 2 is a GTPase protein. There are many factors of translation are GTPase, right. In fact, all of them in the elongation factors are GTPase. So this is a GTPase. So this GTPase protein also comes in and attached somewhere near to the A site blocking the A site. So this is the very basic construction of 30s subunit with three of the initiation factors. Now the mRNA, so there is the presence of this mRNA, so let me draw the mRNA with this red color here. So the mRNA, so let me erase this part here and there is an mRNA present and mRNA will come and join with this 30s subunit. How they pair with mRNA? Now remember in mRNA there are start codon and stop codon positions. That means in this mRNA if we look there is a particular section there is presence and that section is called as the start codon and they also have the particular codon that is called AUG. Now in this prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes AUG this 3 nucleotide set acts as a start codon, so that is present there. And there is also in, in far distant region, there is a stop codon, 
let us say UAA, this is a stop codon. There are three types of stop codon that is found in prokaryotes. Now, that may vary from eukaryotes to prokaryotes, but in prokaryotes, there are three different stop codons. So, what happens? There might be different, many different AUG sites present in same mRNA, right? So, in this case, they need to pick the right one and attach to the right AUG site there. How this whole process actually works? There is a crosstalk between ribosome and, and mRNA as well as you can see this 30th subunit of ribosome contains a particular DNA sequence inside. That sequence is termed as, let us say this is, let us say this is the black sequence here. That sequence is termed as shine Dalgarno sequence. Sine Dalgarno sequence. With the help of Shine Dalgarno sequence, this mRNA can actually attach with the DNA. Actually, let me draw the Shine Dalgarno sequence somewhere here. So, this is the Shine Dalgarno sequence. So, this mRNA has a particular sequence which is complemented with that shine dalgarno sequence that is present in the ribosomal RNA or rRNA that is found in the 30th subunit of the ribosome, right? Because ribosome is nothing but ribonucleoprotein, it is nothing but ribosomal RNA as well as proteins. So, ribosome contains of ribosomal RNA or rRNA and protein molecules. So, the rRNA that is found in 30S of the ribosome is termed as 16S rRNA and inside that 16S rRNA there is a particular sequence called shine Dalgarno sequence which is having the for A of UCC, UC something like that. So, UCC, UC, this is the particular sequence that is present in Shine Dalgarno. Now, you with this, with the help of this sequence, there are some region in the mRNA which is having the complementary sequence of that, that is AGG, AG, that is in the mRNA. So, once they found this sequence somewhere here, so, with the help of this AGG, AG sequence that is present upstream of the start codon site of the mRNA, they can pair with the Shine Dalgarno sequence and that provides this ribosome the signal that yes, this is the start site slightly two or three nucleotides away, I mean two or three codons away. So, we can start translation now. So, that is how they guess this, that is why they get the idea. So, now the 30th ribosomal subunit with initiation factor, three initiation factors, two of them occupying both E site as well as A site, only P site is however free. Okay. So, this whole system is to ensure that only P site becomes free. Why? Because the first tRNA is going to attach with this P site because now they are in place, mRNA is in place. 30th subunit is in place, everything is there. I initiation factor 3 is blocking E site, initiation factor 1, initiation factor 2 is blocking the A site. So, the P site is now free. And now the first tRNA will come and join and add, attach to the start codon with the anticodon loop. So, the first tRNA, the first tRNA there is not the normal type of tRNA. Remember, I have told you before that tRNA is called as formyl or formylated methionine tRNA because that tRNA carries a chemically modified amino acid. Normally methionine is a normal natural amino acid that we find, but for that methionine is become formylated to produce formyl methionine or F met, it is called as F met. So, this formylated methionine is very, very important. So, once this formylated methionine is attached with that tRNA that is there, remember how the charging occurs, we have already learned that. If you have not seen that video, just go back and watch that video. There is a second video on my uh, talk about um, protein synthesis. So, that, that tRNA is charged with formylated methionine and that is the first tRNA 
which will come and bind with let's say this is the tRNA sorry this is the tRNA and it will bind with this codon it is with F met or formylated methionine so once the P site is occupied remember that is why both the sites are first block P site is now with the correct first amino acid containing tRNA once that thing is ensured upon binding of this FMET tRNA there this IF3 can release right so the IF3 will be released now okay so now upon binding of the first charged tRNA that is FMET tRNA to the right place to the right start codon IF3 will be released so I'm it is released so once this process is done then the large subunit will come in place so in a sense this is called the 30s initiation complex remember this is called as the 30s translation initiation complex in prokaryotic system in this complex we have 30s subunit we have the mrna we have the F met tRNA or the first tRNA to start this whole process which will occupy the P site. Now we are going to see later on all the other tRNA will come and first attach to the A site because that is the entry site of, of this uh, whole process. But for the first time the tRNA will come and join with the P site. So this is the 30th initiation complex that is formed. So once this complex is formed. Now the 50th subunit will join because remember the major task for the initiation is played by 30th subunit not the 50th subunit. The major task for 50th subunit however will be in the elongation because 50th subunit has the catalytic domain for the peptidyl transferase activity that means the formation of peptide bonds between the amino acids which will be carried by the tRNA based on the codon that is present in mRNA right so that is the pre-initiation complex 30th subunit initiation complex 30th initiation complex now the large subunit will come in so now what we know is that IF3 is released so let's delete IF3 from here let's erase it from here so this side is now free right now the large subunit comes in this is the large 50s subunit it will comes in and it also have that remember three different e p and a site as well as they also have a unique site here that are called as translation factors binding site these are the translation factor binding sites so now once the 50th subunit comes in and join with the 30th initiation complex, in that case, this IF2, remember it is a GTPS protein. So, IF2 always come with a GTP inside. So, the GTP that is attached with the IF2 will be hydro hydrolyzed into GDP plus PI and then IF2 will be released. So, IF2 is released as well as initiation factor is also released. So, they are also released after the binding of 50th subunit. So upon binding of 50th subunit what we have at the end so this is released after the GTP hydrolysis this is also released these are released right. So it is a lot of things today to actually make you understand the process okay so now what we have we have something like this so upon binding of 50s if2 if1 are released and we have the scenario now this is the actual 70s initiation complex remember i've talked before two types of initiation complex that will form this is the 70s initiation complex because it is a complete ribosomal initiation complex why? Because it has a 50th subunit as well as a 30th subunit in place. Okay. okay. 
So most of the initiation is brought about by 30th subunit interacting with mRNA as well as tRNA. But rest of the process we are going to see that will be brought about by 50th subunit and also all the elongation factor binding and all these things will be brought about by 50th subunit. Peptidyl transferase activity which is the most important activity of elongation phase will be uh, due to this 50th subunit. Okay. So once we know this, let us, so this is a kind of it about the initiation phase of translation. So after the initiation we know both the subunits are assembled but one tRNA is present in the P site, E site is free, A site is free. Why we have this E site? E site means exit site and the idea was, remember in previous video we have already talked that this mRNA will slide, this, this ribosome will slide along the mRNA from 5 prime towards 3 prime. So if I draw this here from 5 prime to 3 prime. So as this ribosome will move from 5 prime to 3 prime, one codon at a time, one codon means 3 nucleotide at a time. During that process, whatever amino acyl tRNA is present in P site will migrate to E site, whatever is present on A site will migrate to P site and whatever present in E site will be released, will fall off. We are going to see that in elongation, right? So stay tuned and watch the elongation video after this.